After speaking out about the corruption in his home country of Russia, former KGB spy Alexander Litvinenko was forced to flee to the UK where he sought refuge and asylum. Years later, he was tracked down by two Russian assailants who slipped polonium-210 into his tea. Unknowingly, Alexander Litvinenko drank this tea and fell ill on November the 1st, 2006 from acute radiation poisoning. Three weeks later, he was dead from radiation sickness. In part three, you'll learn about radioactive decay and how it's harmful to the human body. During the Tokai Mora nuclear incident, lab technician Hisashi Uichi received a lethal dose of radiation. He received radiation burns all over his body, his white blood cell count was reduced to zero, and he had multiple organ failures. His body was literally melting from the inside out. He was kept alive against his own will by doctors who wanted to study the effects of radiation before he succumbed to his injuries three months after the incident. If you happen to survive a nuclear blast, it's still a smart idea to stay indoors to avoid nuclear fallout. Nuclear fallout comes from fission products created by the nuclear blast itself. These radioactive isotopes remain in the air and they emit dangerous invisible energies. These energies penetrate human skin, causing damage to cells, tissues, organs, and your DNA. The truth is, you're exposed to background radiation pretty much anywhere you go on planet Earth. It's found in the air, the soil, the trees, foods that you eat, getting a dental x-ray. In fact, 54% of the annual dose of radiation that you receive comes from radon gas that seeps up from the ground. But it's really nothing to worry about at all. The average person receives 620 millirems of radiation per year just from natural background radiation. The average nuclear power plant worker receives 5,000 millirems. If you receive 450,000 millirems all at once, that's a lethal dose. It should kill you. And if you go back to our guy Hisashi Uichi who died at the Tokai Mora incident in 1999, he received 1,700,000 millirems. The three types of radiation are alpha, beta, and gamma. And you can think of radiation as energies or little particles that come flying off unstable nuclei. It just shoots off at really high speeds, which is why it causes tissue damage and DNA damage. An alpha particle is simply a helium nucleus without the electrons. It's basically two protons and two neutrons. Alpha radiation can be stopped with paper. Meanwhile, a beta particle is simply an electron traveling at high speeds. To stop beta radiation, you need at least aluminum. Last but not least, you have gamma radiation, which is a form of high energy light. You need lead to stop gamma radiation, which is why they give you that lead vest to wear at the dentist's office whenever you're getting an x-ray. All right, let me just illustrate to you what alpha decay looks like. Okay, so we're looking at a polonium-211 nucleus and this nucleus is unstable so at any moment now it should shoot off an alpha particle and there it goes okay so i just hit pause and now that polonium 211 has now changed into lead with a mass of 207 because it, it lost a bit of itself it shot off an alpha particle which is basically two protons and two neutrons so it lost a mass of four so 211 became 207 as I mentioned in part two for atomic structure, any nucleus that has too many neutrons or too little neutrons is unstable, and radium-226 falls under this category. So as a result, it emits alpha radiation. It's going to spit out a piece of itself, an alpha particle. An alpha particle is a helium nucleus without its electrons. So an alpha particle has a plus two charge, and in doing so, it creates radon-222. Sometimes an unstable nucleus will emit beta radiation, which is a high-speed electron that has a negative one charge and no mass. Whereas alpha and beta radiation are affected by charges, you can see how gamma radiation travels in just a straight line because it has no charge, so it's unaffected by electrical fields. It's just simply high-energy light. Let's do nuclear equations. Nuclear equations just show you how one isotope changes into a different element after it undergoes alpha radiation. So how I do these problems is I separate the top numbers from the bottom numbers. So I draw a dotted line going across. So the top numbers are your mass numbers and the bottom numbers are the atomic numbers which are the number of protons. 
So you can see there how 4 plus 222 equals 226. So I need to find the missing number in that blank line. And it turns out that missing number is 86. Because 86 plus 2 would give me 88 on the other side. So atomic number 86 is radon. So you can see in that yellow card there. You can look on any periodic table. Atomic number 86 is radon. Radon has 86 protons. So what this equation is telling you is basically that illustration that's above me. So radium with the mass of 226 will shoot off an alpha particle and in the process of doing so it creates a stable element which is radon 222. So before I start explaining problem number 20, let me just point out that the graphics that I have on the screen are in, in a loop. So it's just going to keep looping. Now for problem number 20, we are looking at beta decay. And beta decay is represented by a weird looking symbol. It's 0 over negative 1 with a beta symbol. So that just represents one of the electrons that's coming off. So in this problem here, okay, just like in the alpha decay problem that we just did, you just want to make sure the numbers that are on top are equal to each other. So you can see how 14 is equal to 0 plus 14. And you want to make sure the numbers that are on the bottom are also equal to each other. So eventually when this thing loops around again, I'll explain what's happening on the bottom. So I'm going to put a little circle there. Okay, and so we're going to circle that. And now I just ask myself, what minus 1 would give me 6? Well, the answer is 7. And now that I have 7, I'm going to ask myself, well, which element has atomic number 7? Which one has 7 protons? It's going to be nitrogen. Okay, so that will loop again. You can keep looking at that. But now I want to focus our attention to the graphic that's above me. And you can see there how carbon-14 is unstable and it's going to shoot off an antineutrino and one electron. So it's undergoing beta decay essentially. And when it does that, carbon-14 transforms into nitrogen-14. Just like how it's shown in the graphic that's to the top left of your screen. Okay, notice how carbon-14 starts with 6 protons, 8 neutrons. When it undergoes beta decay, one of the neutrons becomes a proton. And when it does that, the carbon-14 transforms into nitrogen-14. Okay, the masses are still the same, they're still both 14. You have carbon-14 and you have nitrogen-14. But one of the neutrons becomes a proton. and you have now become uh, seven protons, which is nitrogen. Problem number 21, let's fill in the blanks here. So atomic number 92 is uranium if you look on the periodic table. And on the other end, atomic number 90 is thorium. So I'm gonna fill in their symbols, U and TH respectively. And just like before, I'm just gonna draw the line going straight across, okay. And then I, I'm going to ask myself, well, what plus 234 would give me 238? Well, the only number is 4. Okay, and likewise on the bottom, what plus 90 would give me 92? So I'm going to fill in a 2. So now I'm going to write out my equation again, nice and neat. Okay, we have uranium undergoing 42HE, undergoing alpha decay, to form thorium-234. Okay. Now look at the graphic above me again, and that graphic will explain what we just did in this equation. Okay. So you're starting with uranium with a mass of 238. And this type of uranium is unstable, so now it's going to fire off an alpha particle. So you see that line that's going above? That line says radiation, so it's going to shoot off two protons, two neutrons, a helium nucleus, an alpha particle. And in the process, it leaves behind thorium-234, which is your new isotope. So typically, things that are unstable are radioactive. And when you're radioactive, you want to become a more stable form of yourself by shooting off radiation. So it could be beta particles, or in this case, it could be alpha particles. But whatever you end up with is always going to have less mass. Okay. So once you think about it, you're starting with uranium which has a mass of 238 and by the time you're done 
you end up with thorium with a mass of 234, exactly four less than what you started with. That concludes part three, where I went over radiation and nuclear chemistry. Now it's up to you to finish the rest of the notes, and this also includes the alpha decay portion as well. Make sure you include an ID photo of yourself and the picture of the work that you'll submit online. In part four, I'll discuss fission. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Wind Chemistry.